Three, two, one. <laughs> what up, Rep Pack? It's your boy, your King Reptar, back with another video. I hope you guys are having an amazing day, and if you guys aren't, you know the drill camera flip. It's about to get a whole lot brighter, Rep Pack, because today is one of your guys' favorite series of all time. Bring it on screen. It involves Doom, but not just Doom. It involves prepping. Right here, we got Doomsday Preppers. This is a full-length Doomsday Preppers episode. Recently, I've been kind of adding Doomsday Preppers into the stuff. This is a full Doomsday Prepper episode. So, come on, take a step over here. In this box, guys, I have five products that will literally save your life. Amazon has gotten amazing for me in curating what I'm looking for, and they literally had a section that was items that could save your life. And I was like, oh, that sounds amazing. That sounds Doomsday Prepping. So, I looked through the entire list, and I found the five best items in there. And we're gonna be getting those to the test right now. But they also had, you know Jeremy Renner of Hawkeye fame, of Infinity War fame? Yeah, I think I know. Jeremy Renner has a survival page on Amazon that is all survival products that he recommends. If you guys wanna see a video testing out Hawkeye's doomsday prep and stuff, let me know if you guys wanna see that. But let's get into this box, have all five products in here. Let's see what's the first item. Okay, so the first product is gonna start off with a very, very sad, depressing, miserable, what else would you call the, the situation we went through? Degrading? Yeah, yeah that's a good one. Violating. <laughs> Violating. <laughs> the product I'm going to be showing you is when me and Parker and a couple of friends were in Las Vegas. We actually had a situation where the car got robbed, I got my laptop stolen, Parker got a whole backpack filled with survival gear stolen, and it was a depressing, miserable time. But I was wondering how. How did they break the window so easily? And I'm not recommending you do be buy it for this reason, but I did some research and I found the ultimate in glass breakers. I actually got three of them because I wanted to test out which one was the best. So we got one right here, which is actually a car charger. Go ahead and take a look at that. What does this do here? Powerful steel punch. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Powerful <laughs> steel punch. Sounds like a drink. <laughs> Sounds like a new flavor of bang. <laughs> I hope it's not that. I'm really excited for it. <laughs> a Powerful steel punch. Wow. This tastes like domestic violence. <laughs> <laughs> so we have three different brands of the same thing. This is the high, high end one. This is more of a medium range one. This is the cheapest one. Let me break down what they do. We'll go outside and test them. Okay, so all three of these are glass breakers. What I was saying with the car ride situation was basically the person that broke the window, they broke it perfectly and there was no traces of anything. So I was wondering how could they possibly do that? This right here is an impact free. You don't have to be swinging, making a whole loud event. All you do is press this end against a piece of glass and it will break it. Just press it against it, that's all. Yeah, you're right, this is depressing. <laughs> it's very depressing because that's how somebody stole from us. So the reason why it was invented though is if you have some kind of situation where maybe you're you know handicapped or if you're in a car accident you're a little incapacitated you don't have the strength to grab a glass breaker that's based off impact and start wailing at the window hoping it's gonna open that could honestly be very life-saving <laughs> so we're gonna try out all three this one is a car charger this is the cheapest one it's a car charger a seat belt cutter and also you press down like I said and this will launch an actual glass breaker through that hole right there that should break the glass that was the cheapest one then we have right here which is actually the trademark owner of the press and break glass breaker Breaker, and that is the rescue me this one got the same thing a glass breaker But they actually have the patent on this design and has a seatbelt cutter there as well And then the last one this was the most expensive costing $50 This is actually a police used one You can actually only order this one if you have a police license or you know the right people <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna try them out We're gonna try it out with this one and whatever this can't break We'll try it out on the other ones and then see if those ones will break it because this is the weakest one No trademark. Hopefully it should work though. All right guys, so we're gonna be trying it out right now using the car one. I will put a link down below to where you can pick up anything you guys see in this video down below. This is a pretty thick piece of glass there. We're gonna try it out and this doesn't break it. We're gonna try the other ones. Three, two, one. Oh! Dude, it cracked the first try! I was actually hole punched it straight up. Dude, but look, you can actually see how it's kind of warped. Yeah. So we're gonna do a close-up shot so you guys can see exactly what's happening. When we push down, that is when the glass breaker shoots out using a spring. Wow. <laughs> Literally just a push. And see guys, this is not like, again, if you had a regular glass breaker, any glass breaker you normally would buy, except for these three patented ones, you'd be, you know, trying to blast through it. But we already got one. Let's see the other ones, what kind of hole they make. So this one is the actual one that owns the patent on it. And we'll get a leak down below. We'll go on the exact opposite side. Let's see how that works. 
Oh, hole punched. Now we're gonna try, okay, so that, you know, did about the same, I'd say, on these two, right? Yeah, I'd say about the same. But this one, I'd say, is a little bit easier to use, and obviously, it's, it owns a patent. If I were to say you to buy one of them, buy the one that owns a patent. All right, now we're gonna try the actual police safety level one, which I haven't even tried yet. Three, two, one. Oh, oh. <laughs> there's a big difference. Oh my God. Okay, well, these two made a hole. This one just shattered it in half. Let's try it on a side over here that's not compromised. Oh my god. Dude. We'll do it on the thickest part of the glass. <laughs> Look at how thick that is, dude. Absolutely nothing. And it was so silent. It's super silent. So next, we're gonna be trying on this Welch's sparkling juice. I don't know, it's kinda hard to hear you. Kinda hard to hear me. Yeah, I don't know why. Let me see if this works. Clear. All right, now let's try it on this watch. All right, so we're putting the juice underneath here because this is sparkling juice. I want to test it because carbonated glass is a lot harder to break, as you guys have seen with Coca Cola bottles in the past. But I also don't want to explode my face, so we're gonna do this. All right, you ready for it? Oh, I'm ready. Three, two. That would have gone everywhere. That thing shattered like nothing, guys. This is amazing. You don't have to like, well, oh, oh, the barbarian just. <laughs> Best part about this, be easy cleanup too. Oh, it was easy cleanup. There's still a lot of other glass on the floor too anyway. All right, now guys, what we're going to be doing is a lot of times the reason why people have a glass breaker is in well, some weird situation we all imagine a movie where you drive off a bridge and you end up like in the ocean somehow and your car is like blowing under the water. You're like, no, no. In those situations, they're never able to break the window, right? Because the yeah. water reinforces it. So that's what we're going to be trying right now. We're going to be seeing if we can actually use this underwater. Does the spring locking mechanism still work underwater? Because if it does, that is a really important thing because if you're in your car underwater, even if you have a glass breaker, you're not going to get enough momentum with your arm to be slamming against that window underwater. If the spring function still works, that can make the same amount of pressure despite being underwater. All right, so we're going to try the car charger, which is the cheapest one. I have a good feeling. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, it didn't do it. Oh, it didn't do it. You can actually see it hitting the glass. It's not doing it. Okay, so that Man. just shows you guys the reinforcement of the water really does matter. And the worst part is now you can't charge your phone. Because that's what you care about when you're six feet under the goddamn water. <laughs> now, let's try the branded one. If this doesn't work, we're going to have to try the police tactical one. Three, two, one. Woo! We got a crackage. We got a little tiny little squirter. It works. That means if you were underwater and you had this, you push it against the window, you have a chance. You have a chance of getting out. All right, so we're going to finish it up with the industrial one, the police grade one. We've seen how powerful this one is. So let's go and do it on this left side here. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> I think it's safe to say, of your options, the two best is definitely this one if you've got it a budget. But if you're like, you know, you're really about that safety and you're in situations like this a lot, maybe, then definitely get the police grade one. So that is our first product that could save your life. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, guys. So for the next product, if you guys are out there criminal and thinking about the last product, thinking, oh, how could I use this for bad? The next product's not going to deter you, okay? Because the next product, it is literally to avoid the situation we just put out. So, when me and Parker and the boys were in Vegas and things got stolen, had we had the item I'm about to pull out, it probably could have saved us at least, you know, maybe. Save us a lot of money. A lot of energy, a lot of happiness, a lot of time, and money. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to show you guys it right now. <laughs> it's very uneventful. It's still fun. <laughs> Whoever broke it, it gets a box thrown at it. <laughs> Here it goes. Three, two, one. <laughs> What was it, like, time release for breeze? No. <laughs> it doesn't look the coolest. I'm not going to lie. The off-white is just so it can match your general home appeal. It doesn't look very doomsday prepping, but it is perfect for doomsday prepping. What this is, guys, if you guys are at home and you worry about the fence as much as I do, you can get a bust-down proof door bust down, Tatiana, where you can't kick it in. You can get a cement fence. You can make your whole wall this thick with brick, but you still got a window. You got a, a bust-down proof door, but yet this thin material is what's keeping a perpetrator for coming in. We live in a world where realistically, if somebody wanted to rob you, they could rob you. But this device right here, this is an alarm system that acutely can hear the sound of glass breaking. So if you have a good door, you've got a good camera system, now you've got an alarm system that goes off from strictly glass breaking. And this one's battery powered, so you can put it in your car as well. So if we would have this, that'd have been great. <laughs> car alarms, especially using the devices I just showed you, do not make the alarm go off because there's no impact. Literally shatters it, and the car alarm won't even go off. Since this here is glass alarm it can so take this with you to your hotel take it with you in any kind of emergency situation at like some kind of convention it would work to protect your stuff but let's test it out and see if it really works this thing was $22 on Amazon put a link down below let's see how it fares all 
All right, guys, so we came outside just to avoid making a mess inside because I don't want to get glass on the floor with my dog in there. So right here, we got this jar. What we're going to be doing is simulating a break, and if we were to break into a house with a glass like this, would the alarm system go off? Let's find out. Three, two, one. Oh, I didn't even break it. <laughs> so we can hear the vibration, just me hitting the glass. All right, let's try it one more time, and I'll break it. Hey! Nice. <laughs> it actually was able to tell. Because it happened the same way. I hit it the first time, didn't break, and the second time it did it. Turn that off, it's really, really loud. Yeah, it is really loud. It's trying to talk to me, a rat pack. Uh, <laughs> so that actually worked. I'm surprised. I know, dude. It's actually really cool how it could just tell. Yeah. <laughs> I just wonder though, like, since it is sound based, if you can have something that can mimic that sound, if it'll still go off. You know what I mean? Let's see if, like, if you were to drop a cup in your house, or not a cup, like, let's see if you were to shake the glass, it's left. <laughs> Nothing. What if we try and mimic the sound? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to steal your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's working. All right, I want you to try it one more time right here. I'm gonna do the best glass sound effect you've ever heard of. All right. Okay, that really doesn't work. <laughs> Dude, that's incredible. Nice. It somehow knows the sound of glass. And I didn't even break it. <laughs> yeah, you have to spend money. All right, but I gotta turn this off. That's annoying. Yeah, that's very annoying. So that means if somebody was at your window and just trying to break it, it can sense the vibration that rubs off of glass. The only thing I'd say from our experience, guys, is that it, you have to have it close to the glass. You can't have it like across the room. We tried to do some testing for that. It didn't really, it wasn't very entertaining, so I just cut that part. So you have to have it really close to the window itself, which makes sense. That's the only drawback I would say with it. There's not really too much to test this one. I just wanted to give some kind of example of something that you could protect yourself with when you're using the glass breaker situation where it's honestly so easy to break into stuff. It's a good thing there's something out there that can at least deter that thing. All right, guys, we went through two products, but this next product here, guys, I have to tell you is by far the most expensive thing in the box and probably one of the most useful because what if I told you I could turn fire into electricity? Uh, was like a Fantastic Four plot? Like <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't, but a company that I paid a lot of money to buy the product from can. Right now, we're gonna pull this thing out. I'm gonna show you guys the bio light. All right, ready for this? Uh, yeah, I guess. Three, two, is it, I'm not gonna lie, it was almost $300, and the packaging wow. doesn't look like it was that expensive. So be excited. Yeah, so be excited, it was $300, be excited. Three, two, one. Ooh, not much to it. Like I said, it looks pretty simple. But this is one of the most incredible things I've ever found because one of the things that you're big, I mean, obviously, as you know, we live in a day and age where you need, you absolutely need to have a cell phone or some kind of power in order to survive any type of long, you know, longevity, really. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, so with this right here, it's literally a camp stove that you start a fire in. It turns the actual thermal energy into electricity that you can use to charge your phone or anything else. It uses is a USB, but there are USB to wall outlets that you can even use this to slowly charge a generator. So we're gonna try this thing out. This is the BioLite Camp Stove 2. We're gonna try it out and see if it works. You can also use this thing to cook on. You can literally use fire to cook your meals. Yeah, you can use fire to cook your meals. <laughs> but yeah, you can do it sitting <laughs> on this thing though. Yeah. See right there? You can actually use it to put a pan on. And it even has a fan, so that way it burns it like a gas fire. Let's pop this thing open. Again, guys, this is not cheap. So it's for those that really, really are in this situation that need this let's pop it open okay guys so me and Parker opened it up to get outside to test it already this thing is incredible right oh this thing is amazing <laughs> this is like a, like a lifesaver times 10 like no wonder why in the manual they talk about all the different companies they've actually donated to it on their website they would do as well this is really actually incredible because the thing is I set this up in two minutes all you have to do now is literally drop wood inside of here start the fire and you have a fire source and also charge anything you need to and if you really need to you can plug this into the charger port and it gives you a damn light when you're hooking and you ain't got nothing else that's gonna be a lot of light oh yeah you're gonna use every little uh, uh, lumen of that <laughs> I've never heard anybody <laughs> talk about the distribution of lumens. <laughs> We're gonna go outside and see how many lumens the fire itself can produce and see if it can start some lumens, charge some lumens into my phone, I guess. Lumen. Lumen. I'm gonna name my son Little Lumen. <laughs> wow. 
All right, guys, so we got it out here. We're gonna try it out. I have no clue how it works. Basically, what, or actually, I really do know how it works. That's the first time I've ever been able to say that. Basically, you start the fire in here, and this rod actually right here is what turns the thermal energy into electricity. Now we get to the point where I don't know how it works, but it does that. <laughs> I got this big black piece of Bird. Christmas present. What? <laughs> That's cool. Oh. We're gonna drop this in there, right? Oh, it doesn't really fit in there. Yeah, it's heavy. You've been a good boy. No, you've been too bad of a bad boy. That's why it didn't fit. <laughs> okay, we're gonna drop that in there. All right, so we got a piece of coal in there. I'm also gonna add a fire stick in there. Let's go ahead and drop that in there. What you're supposed to do is, like I said, let it heat up. Once it's heated up, then we can try and see if it really can bring any source of power. Because if you can, that is amazing because you can take this little thing with you anywhere and have a source of starting some kind of electricity because anywhere you can make fire. And then it says once you have a flame in there to turn the fan on. Oh, dude, the fire's growing because the fan, you see it? Oh, wow. Oh! Dude, it grows the fire. <laughs> so you literally have a place that you can cook food on now. All you do is you literally put a pan there and now you have a source to actually cook if you wanted to as well. <laughs> Boom, got a damn cooking option. Now the question is, does it power? It came with the light. Let's see if it's as simple as plugging it in. If this turns on, I'm going to lose my shit. We just created power from literally nothing but fire. All right, it's plugged in. It's a touch light. We'll find out. If this thing turns on, fire just powered it. Three, two, one. Oh! oh! power you know you can use logs sticks leave anything it will make a fire and you have power the bio light i don't say it's about a lot of things one of the few items in doomsday preppers to get it i was i told parker i was like if this light turns on i'm gonna lose it and i well i lost it because seal of approval on screen but i'm actually not good maybe i got it sealed yeah my seal i'm not gonna give it until we can charge a phone that's what that's one of the things that brands that is actually incredible let's see though can it charge a phone I'm gonna plug it in right now you film the phone and we'll see what it turns on three two one. No. I'm done, Parker. I'm done. <laughs> oh my God, dude. This, this is the shit that makes my card. It just is awesome and work. That is amazing. Take, take a couple steps back from it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't burn my. <laughs> It's literally turning this flame into a power to use a fan for you to cook food, which then turns into power for you to charge your phone and you can do anything with your phone. Oh my God. Like, this I is honestly just... can't believe it. That's one of those things where you think of as a child and you're like, why can't we turn like fire's energy? Why can't we turn fire into energy that we use? And then it goes like, shut up. You don't know. What you're <laughs> like. That's impossible, you dumb idiot. <laughs> this is amazing. The reason why I'm losing my mind over this guy is because if you think about this on a small scale, it's tiny. But what if we turned landfills into a way to generate energy for people. Literally grab trash out of the trash can, drop it in there, and boom, now you have more fuel, which creates more power. This is infinite power if you have the resources of something to burn. All right, guys, so we're gonna be back in this box. This next item, I, I think is really cool. If you get back in a drift, or you'll still find out in a second. Three, two, one. Is that computer cleaner? You're not wrong. <laughs> this is called Super Cold. So I found this on the Amazon list. I was like, what the hell even is this? But I looked into it more. This is actually computer cleaner. But if you guys have ever had a normal computer cleaner, the aerosol can where it sprays air, if you turn upside down, a bunch of frost comes out. As Parker, Parker definitely knows. One. Oh my God. I still know. <laughs> So basically this spray is like, so you know in the aerosol can is like that much of the coldness. Right, right. This whole thing's the coldness. Oh my God, <laughs> so why? No, there's no air in here. It's completely just the cold part of an aerosol can. So then what happens if you turn that upside down? I don't know, maybe air comes out. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go outside and show you the example and we'll see how you could actually use this in a survival situation. All right, so here's an example. Like I said, last time I was talking about basically these locks and how if you freeze them in liquid nitrogen, it can actually break. And I got that from a movie where they use an aerosol can to break a lock. And as we all know, I have tried it. It's almost damn near impossible because it doesn't get cold enough if you don't have enough fluid. Since this thing is all fluid and it's actually even colder than that because it's made for that purpose, we're gonna try it on this and see if it works. I've had, seen a lot of online reviews that say that it does work, so we're gonna find out for ourselves. We'll take a look at the freezing. Oh my God. <laughs> it's straight up freezing. All right, so here's a normal lock. It's a classic high school locker. This is what we're using it on right now. So let's just say hypothetically, you need to break into this. You got some, I don't know, insulin in there, something you need really badly, and it's locked up. Let's see, can you break into it? Wouldn't you have to go to your locker? No, it's someone Yours. else's insulin. Oh, it's someone <laughs> else's. <laughs> 
Okay, so it seems like it's not coming off based off that. I'm sure if I started wailing at it, maybe, but we're gonna try it now with the liquid nitrogen spray and see if that makes it a little easier. So online, I was told to get the straw nozzle and put it onto the super cold, which I love that name, super cold, also super smooth. <laughs> Link down below, also super cold when you wear it. <laughs> super smooth when you feel it. All right, so what you're supposed to do though is get the red nozzle, aim for the actual locking joint right there and hold it down inside that hole. Dude, it's actually flooding it. You see it? Oh, yeah. It's like straight up flooding the inside of the lock. Oh my god, that's like straight up liquid nitrogen. It's frosting. Do you see that, dude? Okay, so we're gonna keep blasting it in there. We want it to get nice and frosty right inside there. So we're gonna hold this thing down. Here we go. Now that it's frosted, let's pop this thing open. Do a light tap. Dude! Oh. <laughs> we got liquid! In, it in it. <laughs> liquid! Route. Hey, at least got lock open. I have one question for you, and that question is, how is that really supposed to save your life? I mean, there could be like a baby in there. It's not your life. If it's your baby, it is. <laughs> and the life-saving thing on this one, it's a little bit of a stretch, but it was on Amazon's list, and I just thought it was super cool, so I thought you guys had to see it, and I wanted to actually break the lock with something that was small and something you could actually use rather than a full gourd of liquid nitrogen. So, That's we got fair. this thing open. Let's see what's inside. All right, let's see what's in this locker. What did we get? Do we get insulin? What are you doing in here? The stretch put me in here earlier. Stretch? What, what? Yeah, I was just walking around. He's like, hey, you stupid frog. And I was like, oh, me? He's like, yeah, you're the only stupid frog around here. And I was like, well, that's just me. And then he shut my mouth and shoved me in here. It's actually having a pretty good day today. And then, and then stretch came along. And now I'm back in the darkness, literally and figuratively. Just shut up. Just stay in this corner. Wait, you, want, you want us just to leave? Or? Yeah, yeah, lock that lock again. Plug up these holes. Plug them all the holes. I don't want to breathe. <laughs> All right, man. Hope, hope we get better. I'll, I'll talk to Stretch for you. Oh, hey, let's let go. What? No, just we, leave. We, I'm, leave I me was be. I was trying to oh, let's go. Let's go. Go. All right, guys, so the next item is absolutely my favorite thing on the list because I found it on Amazon, and the reason why I got this, you wanna know who it's by? There's only one company, Rivals, or even gets close to the epicness of cool steel. Um, cool steel. No, it's breaking Benjamin. <laughs> Benjamin, the makers of the air bow, they actually invented an air pistol that is 100% legal, and it is the number one best item for small game hunting, and I think that is the perfect option for self-defense and also for Food. But it's not just any gun, it's a pistol. What if I told you it's a brake barrel pistol? Oh my god. <laughs> it's a brake barrel pistol, guys, which means you don't need a CO2 cartridge to literally break the barrel wherever you at. You have power to shoot it, so you don't need a CO2 cartridge like you would with any other air pistol for small game. Therefore, you can use this anywhere, whenever. But we're gonna open this thing up and check it out. All right, so here we go. Parker knows it says 70% quieter and 20% more accurate. I don't know within what, like what are we comparing these numbers to? But it's pretty epic. God, that is a big pistol. That is a <laughs> not a conceivable item. Okay, let's pop this thing out. That is one intimidating son of a bitch. Okay, we're gonna figure this out. It comes with like a different type of barrel to comes with two different muzzles. Okay, let's hook this thing up. We're gonna go outside and test this. God, I'm excited. Okay guys, so we got three little monsters over there. We're gonna be trying this out on. But I wanted to show you guys how to break barrel pistol. Benjamin managed to load a lot of power to a very small form factor. And we did one test shot just to see how it worked, make sure it was able to work. And God, it is so silent. It's like it a is. slingshot. I, I didn't even hear you. What? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? Did you say we're quiet? <laughs> but the break barrel part, you smack it and then <laughs> Oh God. But we're gonna go ahead and load it in here and we're gonna see how this thing fires. Three, two, one. Wow. Did you see that? I didn't know. I didn't see anything. I literally, I just opened a soda oh, with an air gun. <laughs> I hit the top of the lip and opened it up without hitting the can. Oh, nah. Jesus. Oh my God. Look at this steam. <laughs> Guys, if you get a regular air pistol, it is not going to do anything close to this. You're basically packing the Reptar's Whisper into a pistol. It's not quite as strong as the Reptar's Whisper, but it's also a hell of a lot quieter than that, and too. And a hell of a lot more smaller. It's not about the size of the pack, it's about how you use it. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, let's try it out with something else. Alright guys, we're doomsday prepping, we got pistol, we got our target down there. Can we get some food? Let's find out. Three, two, one. Oh! <laughs> it went 
right in the damn cap. It's in the soda right now. <laughs> I wanted to show you guys how good the accuracy is. You can literally shoot into a damn bottle cap. Benjamin has claimed that you can shoot literally up to 20 shots. As long as there's no user error, the spread will be less than about two inches. Wow. That's how accurate it is. <laughs> All right, guys, so we got one last test. It's a pretty long video, so we're only gonna do this one last one. I wanna see if it's able to break through the metal in this thing. This is one of the hardest things to break through. And then we can see if it has a penetration power. But this is definitely gonna be something we use far more in the future because this is definitely gonna be like a new character, like the airbow. Ooh. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you're new here, and check out this video on the screen right here, which is actually an Area 51 mystery box. Absolutely insane. There was actually a damn flame blade, like a literal freaking fire that was able to burn through things. I'll see you guys over there. And as always, Red Pack, I'll see you beautiful people in the next one. Adios. Bloop.